On Sunday, April 3rd, a number of global media networks published articles based on the confidential, leaked documents from the Panama-based law firm Mossack Fonseca. The leak includes roughly 11.5 million documents or 2.6 terabytes of data. By comparison, the 2010 WikiLeaks Cablegate was roughly 1.7 gigabyte and the previous 2013 offshore leaks were 260 gigabytes. In short, the data leak, now known as the Panama Papers, is the largest in size. The Panama Papers reveal how some of the world's most influential figures have used offshore bank accounts to avoid taxes or conceal their wealth. The list of people includes international politicians such as President Mauricio Macri, Vladimir Putin, Prime Minister David Cameron and even celebrities such as Lionel Messi. What's more is that the Panama Papers expose the level of corruption in the global financial system. In this report we will explain what the Panama Papers are, we will also explore some of the geopolitical related records and what impacts they will have. Welcome to Caspian Report, my name is Shirvan. For more information on the channel visit our Patreon page at patreon.com slash Caspian Report. Roughly a year ago, the Panama Papers were obtained from an anonymous source by the German newspaper Süddeutsche Zeitung. The data included encrypted documents from Mossack Fonseca, a law firm that has sold more than 214,000 letterbox companies around the world. It's important to note that offshore companies are not illegal. There are genuine reasons for using an offshore account such as to protect assets against currency restrictions. Others use offshore accounts for reasons for inheritance and estate planning. However, it also happens to be that many banks, criminal organizations, investment advisors, billionaires and politicians use these shell companies to conceal their wealth, avoid taxes or for money laundering purposes. The following months, the German newspaper collected the data. Ultimately, the data grew to a staggering 2.6 terabytes. Süddeutsche Zeitung then decided to share the data with the International Consortium of Investigative Journalists, or ICIG for short. The ICIG is a non-profit global platform for investigative journalists and has links to hundreds of media organizations. Some of these media networks include the BBC, The Guardian, Le Monde and many more. In collaboration, these networks researched the contents of the data leak and finally published their biggest findings last Sunday. From there it became global news. Who the anonymous source was, nobody knows. What we do know for certain is that the whistleblower wanted no financial compensation in return and only asked for the exposure of these corrupt activities. Given the unprecedented size of the data, more media coverage and outlets are expected to be published in the coming days and weeks. In fact, thus far only the tip of the iceberg has been revealed as there is enough data in the leaks for years of research. Even though these revelations are publicly embarrassing, not all of them will have a meaningful impact. For example, the wealth of President Macri of Argentina was already well documented as he was the president of a prestigious football club prior to his political career. Thus, Macri will most likely get away with this scandal. The same is true for the presidents of Ukraine, Azerbaijan, Georgia and Russia. For example, the Panama Papers revealed that President Putin of Russia, in collaboration with Celist and close associate Roldugin, hid away $2 billion in offshore accounts. Yet, the wealth of Putin was already well known even before the data leak and the total sum far exceeds the $2 billion mentioned in the Panama Papers. However, since Putin has a tight grip on state and civilian institutions, his exposure in Russia will be very limited. 
As for President Poroshenko of Ukraine, who concealed significant wealth in the British Virgin Islands, his involvement will have an influence in the Dutch referendum scheduled for April 6th. The referendum concerns whether the European Union should ratify a trade agreement with Ukraine. Already Dutch politicians who opposed the warming of EU-Ukraine relations are exploiting Poroshenko's involvement in the Panama Papers. One country that will welcome the Panama Papers is China. The ruling party was already amidst an anti-corruption campaign which targeted the Communist Party members. President Jinping is likely to use these new records to expose undesirable members of the Communist Party. However, the data leak also mentions his brother-in-law. As a result, the Chinese leadership will selectively use certain documents against political opponents and at the same time censor other documents for protection of political allies. Further west in Europe, Iceland's Prime Minister Gunn Lagunson has just resigned from his position. This follows the fallout of the data leak which mentioned how Gunn Lagunson had stashed away large sums of money in the British Virgin Islands with a partner whom he later married. Gunn Lagunson later on sold his share of the company to his wife for one dollar. Thus, he avoided the tax reforms that followed the financial crisis in Iceland. The overwhelming protests in Iceland have now forced the resignation of Gunn Lagunson. Some other noteworthy figures mentioned in the Panama Papers include King Salman of Saudi Arabia, Prime Minister Sharif of Pakistan, former Prime Minister Al Thani of Qatar, the list even includes close associates of President al-Assad of Syria, elite figures of the influential Chinese Politburo and Ian Cameron, the father of Prime Minister Cameron of the United Kingdom. Interestingly enough, there weren't really that many Americans in the list. About 3,100 shell companies were based in the United States. That number sounds a lot, but in comparison to the true number of tax dodgers by Americans, it's relatively low. The reason for this is Washington's failure to join the Common Reporting Standard, or CRS for short. The CRS was meant as a transparency initiative within the context of the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. One of the principal ideas was to share tax data in order to combat global tax evasion. And even though more and more countries are becoming signatories to this initiative, Washington itself has yet to fully join. The US Treasury has announced the intention to join the ranks of the CRS, but without congressional approval, that is just not going to happen. In the meantime, the US refusal to share tax data has transformed the country into one of the largest tax havens of all. This is one of the many loopholes that allows for the existence of shell companies within the United States. Meaning, wealthy Americans and companies who want to hide their money have no reason to go to Panama while they can do it in the homeland. All in all, the Panama Papers mentions about 14,000 clients who have used tax havens to conceal their wealth. Of these clients, the data mentions government officials, their relatives and associates of more than 40 countries. These include figures from India, Brazil, Mexico, South Africa, Spain, Romania and more. The names revealed by the Panama Papers is quite long, but the point is that every one of these cases deserves special attention. In essence, the mentioned examples show that there will be repercussions, but justice will not prevail everywhere. Every politician will be judged according to their circumstances. Some will get away with it, others will not. But perhaps what the Panama Papers reveal at their core is not the individual scandals and corrupt dealings, rather it places the focus on the financial system itself. There have been theories, rumors and allegations of vast sums of hidden wealth, however never before was there genuine evidence for such activities. What's more is that the data leak comes at a time when the gap between the rich and poor has been increasing for decades. Interestingly enough, Mossack Fonseca is the world's fourth largest offshore law firm. 
So just imagine how much more concealed wealth and tax evasion exist in the top three largest law firms. According to some estimates, roughly 8% of the global wealth is currently hidden in offshore tax havens such as the Cayman Islands, Puerto Rico, Bermuda, Switzerland, Luxembourg, Cyprus, Hong Kong and more. Some politicians have long advocated for tax reforms that will enable governments to haul in the concealed wealth and boost their local economies. Several countries have already started investigating the Panama Papers, including France, Germany, the Netherlands, Austria, Sweden and the United States. Basically, the Panama Papers have now provided the necessary public support for the financial reforms, and many governments and politicians will use the momentum to push for the necessary tax reforms. Thank you for watching this Caspian Report which was brought to you by the contributors on Patreon. And if you want to support the show, please go to patreon.com slash Caspian Report. For now, thank you for watching, take care and suckle.